Okay, there we go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, how you been, Libby? Um, I mean, yeah, good considering. I mean, I'm yeah. supposed to be right now, so that kind of sucks. <laughs> yeah, where were you guys gonna be? Um, all over the place. We were gonna be at Punk Rock Bowling in Vegas. We were gonna be at in Kentucky. We were gonna be at Moonrunners in Chicago. Um, we had plans for Canada, like, and then we we're supposed to be in Europe in August, but that's getting canceled too. So, damn, yeah, <laughs> that sucks. Um, yeah. Have you been, you've been to Europe before? No. No? Oh, shit. Like, this was my year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you done Canada at all before? Um, actually, we just did Canada our last tour, but we did, like, the west side. Okay. So we were yeah. in the BC. Side. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we, we were only in that, we were only there for a day. We went to Vancouver, which cool. I've been to Vancouver. Yeah. But I think... Out of everywhere I've ever been, walking the streets of Vancouver was probably the sketchiest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, what is that street called that you? I'm trying to think of it. I'm trying to think of it too. I can't remember. It's not Hastings, is it? That's. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Yes. I think yes. so. Um, hey. It's scary. Oh my goodness! Yes, Don't we got our van window was uh, broken while we were there. Yeah. I almost on a needle just walking down the street and it was like it was so funny because it was like ev half of everyone was like the most polite person I had ever met in my life and then like the other half was like on a totally different planet like out of their mind on drugs. yeah <laughs> that that street and that area in particular it, a lot of the other parts of the city are much different was, yeah yeah was great was great but that yeah. one street I like usually before a show I'll like to take a walk around and just like get a feel for where we're at because so often it's like, yeah, I've been to all these places, but if someone was like, how'd you like blah, blah, blah. I'd be like the inside of that one bar was great. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Experience it as much. So I try before each show to like take a walk around, maybe go like find some local food or something like that. But um, yeah, I went to take my walk in Canada and was like, well, maybe no. I should end. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not the best place to take just a stroll by yeah. yourself there. It's pretty, yeah, pretty sketchy, yeah. But yeah, um, so this would be the second time co going to Canada, like, and actually spending some time. We had a, a handful of dates there, but next year, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Let's hope that everybody can resume their touring and make up all the shows that they missed. Yeah, right. Just combine forces and we should just do mega tour. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Um, so out of all the places that you played, what do you have like a one that stands out as far as like maybe a best town? Uh, best town. I had a lot of fun in Denver, actually. Like yeah. we had a lot of fun in Denver. Um, there was a, like, I was, it was a surprising amount of people. Like you ever like come around the corner and you're like, that's a lot of people who are coming to watch me do something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's how I felt about Denver too. Yeah. That was one of those moments I came around the corner and I was like, well, you all showed up, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, but that was a really fun town. Um, New Orleans is always probably like one of my favorite places to visit. Not that anyone ever actually comes into the show, but they hang out outside. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. You just play on the street. Yeah, there you go, which is more fun anyways. And that's how we started, anyways, was just as a busking band. So I always yeah. like to get back to that. Yeah. It's fun to do, as long as you don't totally blow your voice out, right? Uh, yeah, that was like, <laughs> that was like the last fail of being in New Orleans is that we were like on the street and I was like, we have to, we have to bust New Orleans. We can't not bust New Orleans. And then we did, and that was like, like the beginning of tour and i just started out tour just like where's this how blowing it out that'll happen have you guys been doing any um streaming stuff because there's so much going on i know right well we did i had clyde um from clyde and the mill tailors he's my banjo player um i had him come and he stayed with me for like a week and we did a live stream in the garage here and then we actually wrote like five new songs cool so <laughs> yeah but that was the only live stream we've done i honestly i hate playing alone yeah it's it must be very strange i 
I'm just a drummer, so I don't really know that feeling. Never have to play alone. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I so like I've had a couple um like I had an opportunity to do like a live stream thing and I like totally just chickened out. I don't know what it is. Like I used to only ever play music by myself and now that I have like other people, I think it's that if I if I fudge, I don't know, can I swear? Yeah. Okay, if I fuck up, <laughs> yeah. then I have other people to catch me. Like, and I, like, you can't notice how much I'm yeah. just thinking in that moment <laughs> because, <laughs> like, killing it on the violin. So, or if I, like, totally space the next words, I can, like, look at Lucas and be like, let's hear it again. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's all sorts of tricks that performers do that most people don't realize are going on right before their eyes. Right. Yes, totally. The That's me. If I ever tell Lucas that I want to hear it over again, it's because I have totally forgotten what words come next. So and now everybody knows. Yeah. That's so great. everyone knows my secret now. Um, <laughs> but the amazing job of picking it up when I drop it. So yeah, I just, I get like, I'm just a chicken shit about playing on my own anymore, but I really should because people give the people what they want. Yeah, exactly. Well, well, you know, it is, I can imagine it'd be pretty nerve wracking. I've always wondered that about singer songwriters and people that can just get up there and do it by themselves. It seems right. fucking intimidating to me, especially, you know, for smaller audiences, because you can yeah. hear what people are saying. <laughs> Sometimes they don't even, you know, we've had shows where people don't give a shit at all, but we're still loud enough that we can drown them out. And then I just right. do crazy shit anyway to scare them. There you go. Yes. Scare them. Disturb them. Yeah. <laughs> that, that seemed to work for me. Um, yeah. We called it a back to the future set. If it was like w really, really bad and like crickets, then it was, it'd be like, you know, you may not be ready for this, but your kids are going to love it. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Uh, yeah. I think favorites when I like can look in someone's face and tell that they like, they don't know whether or not they like it. Like they do like it, but it's almost disturbing to them that they are interested in the first place. So. <laughs> yeah. I've definitely, I've definitely experienced that. I would always yeah. pick them out. You know, the one person that's like, mm. I would just lock eyes with them and, you know, yes. blow kisses at them and stuff like that. Like me. Yeah. <laughs> Scare them. This song is for you. Yeah. <laughs> Huh. What, are you, uh, what are you guys doing? Um, I have been a Larry Ness Flask band for a very, very, very long time. Yeah, we we played with you a long time ago in Eugene, right? Oh my God, a million years ago. Yeah. Well, I was 15 years old, and that was my very first band, and we played in that bar, and I got so drunk that I told the bartender that I was 19. <laughs> 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 I was like, you know what? You've been serving me drinks all night, and I'm not 21. <laughs> what did he do? Um, he told me to shut my pretty mouth and gave me another drink. He was like, you shut your pretty mouth. Don't tell nobody else. Don't say that again. Don't tell nobody else that. Here's your drink. Now get out of here. <laughs> now get the fuck out of here. But then y'all came and slept over at our house that night. But even before that, though, when I was like 14, 15, I grew up in Corvallis. And y'all were a punk rock band and yeah. used to come play the drop-in center in Corvallis. Yep. And uh, that's when I first... pictures of those nights, yeah. With the Ugly Litter kids. Yep. Good old Ugly Litter. Oh, my god. Man, goodness. I haven't talked to those guys in forever. Right? Um, Jeff a little bit, but his parents always came and saw us no matter what. So that oh, was cool. That's so cool. I love that. Yeah. I Aaron's support like yeah our our player's mom mary hi mary um she is literally like our biggest fan and she's um she's amazing she like flies in to come to our shows on tour and like she got an airbnb and we all had like a mom party and it was just absolutely the best yeah i it is uh fantastic when the parents are into it my mom is our biggest fan still yeah good good yeah, yeah and she always i mean we wouldn't be a band without my parents' support. That's for sure. My brother and I wouldn't have been able to get started because they put up with our shit for right. Ever. We played right. in their house. You know, we practiced in Redmond, Oregon for forever. And, and, and we, you started 
started out as a punk rock band, so like they were, they had to listen to electric instruments. They had to listen to a lot of craziness, <laughs> <laughs> and they put up with it. <laughs> All the moms, which actually, like two days ago was Mother's Day, so shout out to the moms. Yep. Shout out to everybody who raised themselves. To yep, you, your own mama. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to ask you about your writing process because a lot of people are interested in the way different musicians go from like a just a concept or an idea to a finished song right yeah yeah um well like for me a lot of the times it's like all like now anyways because before it was like a lot of writing on my own now I'm doing like more writing like with me, like my band members mm -hmm. um so for me like Clyde will come to me with like a little doodly do that he wrote and then um like i'll just kind of listen to it and and see what i can like what vibe it gives me like um he came to me the other day and he was like he played me one and i was like this one gives me like a spooky tavern ghost vibe we should write this song about a spooky tavern ghost <laughs> like cool. so it never comes to me unfortunately i've been really trying um, to stay away from writing about the devil because for some reason, every time I'm like, you know, what would be cool is if we talked about the devil in this song. <laughs> so you're trying <laughs> for, to diversify a little bit. For every song, yeah. And I'm like, you know what? Instead of the devil, let's talk about a witch. So <laughs> for me, I think it, a lot of my like inspiration just comes from my like natural um, curiosity for things that are like morbid or spooky. Um, so yeah that's that's like where my inspo comes from but like as far as like actually writing like my writing technique I've like I don't know um for y'all's singer if it's the same I, for me I only really started playing an instrument like I wasn't so interested in playing the instrument I wanted to sing mm -hmm. but I felt like especially as a female um just coming into like uh, coming to other musicians and being like, I want you to play that so I can do this. Like I didn't feel um, as like taken as seriously. So like mm. I started learning to play an instrument because I wanted to be more accepted for in the music community mm -hmm. so that I could like break away. Now I feel like I could put down my ukulele and not need it. And I could just focus on my vocals because I've already like proved myself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but like writing style wise, I usually will write my, I write my lyrics first and then I will like put music to it as okay. opposed, I've, I've been having like, this is totally different for me, like having Clyde write the music and then me writing words to it because I'm not, I'm a, I'm a, a singer first and a musician second as okay. opposed to the other way around. But I was talking to someone else the other day and they were like, that's weird. You write the words and then the music. I do the opposite. And so I didn't even realize that it, like I was doing it backwards. I, you know, it's all, it's all different. That's why I ask is because people have so, so many different techniques to achieve the same thing. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. It's really cool. I find something really catchy, like some kind of like, like some kind of sentence that'll like, like really hit mm -hmm. and then kind of like write around that. So maybe I'll know I want to use like that one sentence um, like the, I can get to hell much faster than you in the witches song. I was like, that was more like, that's what I knew I wanted to say. So I kind of like wrote things around it so that I could get that point out. Yeah. Too. Cool. That makes sense. That's awesome. Everybody does, you know, has different techniques. Um, we would do like, typically Ian would write the song or Andrew would write the, the basic melody and lyrics and everything and then bring it to the group and then we would all kind of throw in a bit so yeah yeah it's yeah it's like the I, went. until i have like an actual skeleton <laughs> otherwise yeah. i'm like, these bones <laughs> like, <laughs> but something. once i together and i can be like okay this is what i have what do you think and especially with like lucas who's such an amazing soloist like i don't even have any any inkling of what he's going to do with it until I give it to him, you know, yeah. and then he's on all on his own and makes it something different. Yeah. I felt lucky in that way too. I was able to snag these super talented dudes 
um, like when everybody was still in high school and we started this band and then they just kept getting better. And I was like, right. damn, <laughs> yes. this is, this is great. Just, yeah. That, I mean, that's how I feel about us. I feel like we just, it's like, we're just like a fine wine, man. The more that we do it, the more I'm, I'm loving it, that it's changing, um, which I've had a little bit of like a pushback in some spots um, with like the change of the music and how it's like going in like a little bit of a darker direction. Um, and people, a couple people being like, I like the first album, which the first album, I want to call it a demo. I don't even want to call it a first album. It's a lot of, um, a lot of covers. We were really just a busking band and I needed something to sell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, um, so like, I really feel like this album, we just released the here's to the devil. I feel like that's our, like, like our first album. That's mm. like where I feel I, I really got more comfort in my style and got like a more clear idea of what I wanted to do and like what kind of music I wanted to write. So our next album, we've got like, I think we're going to do like a side A and a side B where like side A is kind of sweeter. Um, oh. like that don't have like growlies and yeah. then have I'd be, be like the harder, darker. Cool. Give everybody a little bit of what they want, but still like, I like the evolution of bands. Like, like watching, uh, watching y'all go from like a garage punk band over the years to like acoustic instruments and y'all were like more busking. We played, um, you guys played that pirate party a million years ago. <laughs> yeah. Fire. Yeah. Um, and then to watch you guys like progress into essentially like acoustic electric, yeah. like much louder, much harder. I, yes, I love a good evolution. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. I, I think that it makes perfect sense. And it's a, it's, it's a natural thing with a band. Like if you keep at it, you're going to get better. So you're going to want to explore new avenues of your art and not just stay the same, you know, yeah. it's just a natural thing that happens. How boring. I don't want to say yeah. the same. Yeah. How boring. <laughs> exactly. Boring. And so I where in a punk band. Like that was like growing. I mean, I grew up in the punk rock scene. I always wanted to be in a band that fucking yelled at you. Like, yeah. Oh, that, that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> yeah. I always like melding those like, you know, joy and happiness. And I want everybody to have a good time. And I also want to scare people a little bit, you know? Yes. Yeah. You like guys have saying. nice and scary. Yeah. Um, and also I was wondering well, where can people go to buy your latest album? Um, it's on, available on Spotify. And then um, also if you actually want to like buy it from us, not just like a digital copy, uh, Flail Records, flailrecords.com has like a lot of really amazing folk punk um, right now. Like they're putting out some days and days uh, merchandise and uh, like, uh, Holy Locust is uh, their merch is through us as well. Tejon Street Corner Thieves. So, and uh, Flail Records is actually run by our bass player, Scott. Okay, cool. I was wondering because I looked it up on um, Amazon Music and it said Flail at the bottom, Flail Re Records. So, I'll put that in the um, comments below too, a link <laughs> so people can go check it out. Yeah, because every band that's like that Scott's working with is fucking great. So, cool. Right on. Checking. Um, what else did I want to ask about? What, what stands out as something that happened on tour or a show maybe that's like the craziest shit? Oh my God. Okay. But I've told the, <laughs> I feel like I've told this Came story right. two times. That's okay. Let's hear. I, I haven't heard it. Okay. I, and I've never told it via like video okay. only I feel like I'm a rather expressive person. So it'll be better this time. So set the scene set the scene we're in virginia beach so we're in virginia beach um we had just gone to the ocean i had actually never seen uh, the ocean on that side of the, uh, the country so i was really excited about that and the sand was brown which i don't know if you like the oregon sand is like a gray and that totally tripped me out this has nothing to do with the story at all which <laughs> all of it um, is part of the setup so yeah. it's good this is my specialty, um, telling a story and then telling you a lot of useless facts in between that have nothing to do with the point. Um, but so we walk back from the beach and uh, we get to the venue and show hasn't started yet. There's this really cute 
couple who had actually been to one of our shows previously who had won tickets to this show um, on the radio. So they were like really excited to see us again. Um, and uh, we're all hanging out outside and we're outside the venue and there's like one of those, um, it's like a, a little fence. It's not that tall. It's not really to keep anybody out. It's just like, this is where you can drink beer. You know, like one of those teeny tiny little fences where you go smoke. So we're all out there hanging out. And all of a sudden, there's like this, like, <laughs> noise. And this fucking motorcycle comes around the corner, completely engulfed in flames. Like the whole thing is just in flames. The dude's in flames on the motorcycle. And he comes around the corner and just crashes this motorcycle. And of course, everyone's like, oh, we have to help, you know? So people are like running to help this dude. And the, and the, the dude of this cute couple that had won the tickets goes to jump the fence to run over and help. And he jumps the fence, which the exit to the fence was really not very far away. It was really just right there. He could have just walked through, but he hops this fence in like the midst of all this drama and he lands on the other side of the fence and breaks his leg. Like, just, I mean, and not just break his, not like, oh, I like hurt, it was like, like screaming, the leg was dangling, like <laughs> it was, it was insane. So I'm standing here in the middle of this, this man is on fire, this motorcycle is on fire, this man's leg is broken, and I'm really just standing there like, well, that took an interesting turn. <laughs> Yeah. Like this within, is before the show? Yes. Yes, before the show. So this man is crying. Rightfully so. He deserves to cry. He is crying, holding his leg, and, and saying, I'm not going to get to go to the show now. <laughs> it was so sad. So his leg is broken. Scott has to call the, the, in, in, the cops. So Scott's on the phone with 911, and Scott's like, uh, yeah, you're going to need to send an ambulance down here. Uh, no, the man on the motorcycle is fine. He stopped, dropped, and rolled, and it worked. Just so everyone, like, they trained us for that when we were young. If, if you ever are on fire on a motorcycle, stop, drop, and roll. So this yeah. man stopped, drops, and rolls. And he actually had, like, dreadlocks that had, like, burned up all the way to his helmet. <laughs> but other than that, he was, like, totally fine. So, yeah, Scott has to call the, the cops, and he's like, yeah, yeah, we need an ambulance. Not for the man in the motorcycle accident. No, for, for the other man. He wasn't in the accident, but like, so Scott, and then the ambulance comes and puts this poor dude on a stretcher. I gave him every single piece of merch that we owned. Sent him and his sweet little girlfriend off in the ambulance with everything we had. And um, turns out, they messaged us later, turns out he broke his leg in five places. He broke his knee. He broke his ankle in like two spots and then he broke like his main leg in like our main bone in like two spots too. And poor dude. And like still to like this day is like working through like physical therapy for this. I feel horrible for him. Well, it's not your fault, but yes. yeah, it's my Lord. Crazy. And then that night we like played and at the end of the set, I like jumped off the stage and as I was doing it, I was like, Oh no, my legs. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, this is, if you could just literally step over a fence and just break your leg in five different places, like, we are all very fragile. <laughs> yes, we are. We all um, need to take... Sorry? We all need to take calcium. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, did you know Andrew broke his foot in a no. similar sort of... He jumped Shut off a stage. We were in um, Chicago, and he... And it was... It was not a tall stage at all. He's right. jumped off of things that are much taller than that. Right. You know, on warp tour, the stages are, are pretty high usually. And we did that every day. All the time. I've done such crazy shit. And he just like stepped down with his banjo. He just basically stepped like maybe. You've got your instrument in your hands. You're not trying to be wild. No, two and a half, three feet, maybe. And he yeah. kind of just stepped down and I saw him limp and he kind of was like, ow, that sucked. <laughs> but it, he just played the rest of the set. And then afterwards, we stayed in that basement, which was a f of the venue, which was horrifyingly nasty. But oh. we had to anyway. And he was down there and he was like, dude, I think I broke my fifth metatorsal. And I was like, first of all, how do you even know those words? Oh, yes. and, 
Second of all, no, you didn't. You just stepped down <laughs> off the stage. Like, what the hell? You, there's fine. no way. You're, You're fine. fine. <laughs> Put a Band-Aid on it. Drink this. Shut up. Right. And then in the morning, he's like, I'm going to the ER. I have to get this x-ray. And we were like, really? And he's like, yes, it is broken for sure. And so we, he did. It was, it was the, it, he was right. It was the fifth metatorsal. So it's like your pinky toe bone up here. Yeah, yeah. And he snapped it. And then we, you know, we were in the middle of a tour and then we had to do Europe right after that. So he did all of Europe on crutches and a with chest. Uh, <laughs> he sat down. <laughs> it was weird. Yeah. Oh, team player though, to keep he was going. So, he was so fucking bummed out the whole time. He was just like, Hmm. Just playing. Just we're like, we're going to the bar. Let's go. And he's like, I can't go. <laughs> Drinks. My free drink tickets don't mix well with my painkillers. <laughs> yeah. He was just like, the doctor told me not to drink. <laughs> Weakens <Aww>. your bones. <laughs> poor guy. <laughs> yeah, it sucked. Yeah, poor dude. Well, and calcium too. Yeah. Calcium is important. So, <laughs> yeah, man, that is a crazy story. Good, good one. Yeah, right? I know. Not a good one for him, but. We need a new one because I feel like I've told them a couple times, but man, anytime anyone's like, what's the craziest day of tour? I'm like, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, let that me. is fucking nuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. a good one. We had something happen in Fest, at Fest in Florida, Gainesville, oh. when a guy <laughs> had a heart attack right in front of the venue. And like, what? I don't know if you know Roscoe. Roscoe was there. And the whole band was there and we tried to get the, we, we called the cops and they came and they were just standing there staring at this guy dying and Dal and Roscoe were like, do something, do CBR, do something. And they're like, we're just waiting for the firefighters to get here. We, we don't do that. You know, we're, that's not our job. Right. We're, we're like, dude, fucking do something. Like this guy's dying. And East something. Yeah. They, they, they started doing CPR on him eventually they, after Roscoe gave him such a shit, good. so much guilt that they oh. did something. And got then, the the, <laughs> yeah, the EMTs got there and got, took him away. So, right. Did he, did he survive? I don't know. Nobody, nobody found out. He was just some random festy, you know? We need to know. I need to know. Yeah. If you are that man, call if us. If you survived a heart attack at Fest, Please slide into the DMs. I need to know. Yeah. <laughs> right in the comments, everybody. Yeah. Let's figure this out. Anybody know yeah. that guy? <laughs> yeah. I we hope so. Know. I hope he survived. I don't know what it was, overdose or what, but something bad. Yeah, right. Hope hopefully he just needs calcium. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> so, um, let's see, what else what else can we talk about? I usually have like a big list, but I found it pretty easy to just like talk with musicians about their trade and it kind of right. happens naturally. Um, yeah. Yeah. So what was the last show you played before the lockdown? The last show I played was actually my birthday, um, February 19th for everyone who needs to know, um, in Salt Lake city. So oh. that was like the very end of our tour. It was like, oh, I played, okay. played that and then, um, and then flew to California and, pretty much just decided to move here. Oh, so, th so that's where you are now. That's yeah. I'm living in, um, in California in San Jose area. Oh, okay, cool. Literally like I moved here on like May 6th or March 6th. And then like the world, um, shut down like 10 days later. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so it was like perfect timing. Well, yeah. And then you have a lot of time to settle in and get everything yeah. arranged properly decorated yeah exactly I, I was gonna say it looks like you've been there a while but just i've been to time. 100 times yeah buying new cool. i have like i have adopted many new plants that's what i'm doing in my spare time is like misting plants all day being like oh pretty babies <laughs> <laughs> yep that's what we do too same yeah. sort of thing <laughs> that yeah like, are pretty much the only things keeping me sane during quarantine like started to talk to my dogs like they're people. I'm like, do you want to watch? Anyway. <laughs> um, have you you read books? Some people I do. Actually, so okay, I yes, I do read books. But it had been a very long time since I had like really gotten into something, and I um, looked at my shelf of books that I never read, 
and was like, I am going to read a book. And <laughs> so I read let me get it for you. Yeah. Have you read this book? <laughs> I have not. I've seen part of the movie. Have you seen the movie? Okay. No. Excellent story. I am a fool for um, any kind of true, like true crime. Mm -hmm. I love murder. It is my favorite. Um, and so this is like a really great story about Michael Eilig, who was like a celebritant in, um, in New York in like the early nineties. Um, and he pretty much made like an entire like scene. It, it was called the cl like club kids mm -hmm. and they were just like wacky ravers essentially. Um, and he was like king of the club kids and a, a party promoter and, uh, he ended up getting really hooked on drugs and um, killed his drug dealer boyfriend. Actually, I don't even think that they were boyfriends, um, but they had not known each other for very long, but ended up killing him. Um, his like friend hit him over the head with a hammer during a fight, and then they shot him up with Drano. Kept oh. him body in the base or in the bathroom in the tub for like a week, and they had a party at their house. And like taped off the bathroom and said that they were having sewer problems and that's what the smell was. And people weren't allowed to use the restroom. But they had like a straight party at their house with like this dead body in the bathroom. Oh, it's so good. And so they take the body and they dis he dismembers it and puts it in a um in like a trunk. And they take the trunk down the main elevator of the apartment building. They take a cab with this body in this trunk, in the trunk, in, in the trunk, in the trunk. In New York and City. It's through New York City to, um, what is the, the river there? Hudson? The, yes, they take it to the Hudson, throw it off the dock in the Hudson, but the trunk is lined with cork and it floats. <laughs> and so they watch his body just like float away in this trunk down the Hudson. And then, yeah, so it just, um, and then of course it all blows up as things do. People found and he, it. And yeah, and he ended up in prison and he actually just got out of prison a little while ago. So Michael Ellig, if you're watching, I love the book. It's great. Great. <sighs> Michael Culkin was an excellent representation in the movie as well. Yeah, So yes. I was wondering about that. Nothing like a child star growing up to like pretend to do drugs, which I actually think Macaulay Culkin got into drugs pretty hard. So, I think so. Yeah. Seems like it. Yeah, <laughs> there was a wonderfully horrible picture of him that went around. I'm a fool for like any kind of like pop culture. Like I love, um, I love horrible reality television. It's like I love garbage, garbage TV is like. <laughs> I would just want to watch 90 Day Fiance and Intervention like all day long. Oh my God. <laughs> all right. Well, yeah, you've got lots to do then. There's plenty of that sort of TV going around. So, plenty. Did you watch Love is Blind? No. No? Okay. Well, we hate Jessica. That's all you need to know. Okay. I'll, I'll <laughs> write that in my notes. Yes. We hate Jessica. We hate Jessica. Did you watch Tiger King? Yeah, I definitely did. That was uh, fantastic. Oh, yeah. That was really just like a really long episode of Jerry Springer. I loved yes, it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that was, they're, I don't know. I've been hearing all sorts of rumors about them making a real movie of, of that. Oh, really? I can't remember who they said was going to play him. But yeah, it's been a, all of the late night guys have been talking about who's going to play him and whatnot. Talent. Yeah, great. I can't wait. I yeah, <laughs> it's going to be amazing. It's going to be great. I so, think... Uh, I got to been too active in my life lately. I want to, like, turn the television off and go yeah. outside. Yeah, that's, uh, that's one of the reasons why I started doing this is because I was like, well, I've got this time on my hands. I want to do something constructive with it. And I haven't been yeah. writing music, but, um, but doing this. So I've been, you know, stockpiling lots of these yeah. so i'm gonna put them out like i have that, i have that need and want to like be creative and then i also have this need and want to just turn into a human slug <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. i'm i'm 
think both of those right now. Some days are good and some days are bad. I've actually like, I mean, just to like touch on something that a lot of people don't, but like mental health during this time has been like a struggle for, for me. I feed off of interactions with other people like, and um, like live music events. Those are things that like keep me happy. And right now there are none. So I think just even, um, like I do have my days where I'm like, fuck yeah, I'm going to write an entire song. I'm going to sew that patch on that jacket and then, you know, do that other shit that I've been putting off forever. And then I have days where I wake up and I'm like, nothing. Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> Fade into nothingness. Yeah. That's why this is important too. You know, all the interactions with all of our friends and people is super important, even though it's yeah. via Zoom or Skype or whatever but yes, it keeps this, us active. This will, feed, this will feed me for the day. Like yeah. my inner, I have a, like a little gas gauge inside of me. And sometimes I wake up and she already full. And sometimes I wake up and I'm empty as hell, you know? And like just little interactions of that I would normally get going to work, you know, like yeah. my, with my work wife or like, you know, yeah. So this will, this will feed me. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, it's good for all of us, you know? It's good to do. Um, and, that, and, and it's also like a historical capsule too of the times that we're living in. Like, yeah. you know, I would have never thought to do this before, but I should have, you know, I could have. But now yeah. I know like that it's here, it's available. And we all were too busy for it, I guess, before, you know, but now nobody does anything. So now you have to find something to occupy yourself, like to keep you from going insane. Yeah. Oh, the other one, the, speaking of TV, I just remember we're, my wife and I are getting super into Game of Thrones finally. So we're like watching Bye. a couple of those. Yeah. Like okay. this is a, watch it? Yeah. Oh, yes. We're that's late so, bloomers. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, I, was, I was a late bloomer to, to um, Game of Thrones as well. I like, when it first came out, I was really like, I don't know why I get like this thing inside me who's, that's like, anti what other people think is so cool or something i don't know like let go yeah. it's yeah, cool for um but so like everyone got into it and i was really like i don't know i don't really like fantasy like that much like pff, dragons aren't that cool and then i got sick and i was sick for like a week and i was like fuck it i'm gonna start this hbo trial like let's see what this is about and i started watching it and after watching like a watching it for like a little, I mean, I binged it. I probably watched the whole thing in that week. Like all of it was like, and um, yeah. Yeah, I leave my couch. And uh, after watching it for a while, I was like, fuck yeah, dragons. I fucking love dragons. I have, I have three dogs. They're all dragons. Like <laughs> I got really into it. And actually the last, right there somewhere. the last wasn't out yet, but it was, there you go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, the last season wasn't out yet, but it was coming out. And I ended up having like a, a whole ass Game of Thrones party. I had like chicken. And there was like no utensils. Like I made <laughs> people eat with their hands. I like set, I bought a thing at Party Central that was like a background of a castle. And it came with all these like cardboard swords and like, like a little like uh, crown on a stick to put on it. And I like made people come over and... I had like a Game of Thrones party to like so, watch the first. Who were you? Oh, I mean, I'm always the mother of dragons. Like who? Okay. I, like, always Khaleesi. <laughs> but <laughs> that's who, that's what I like to think, anyways. <laughs> Probably just like a pop girly or whatever. <laughs> well, if, if, if if your dogs are dragons, then you are the mother of dragons. So there you go. Right. I have three of them. Yeah. Now I. Have I have four dogs, so. Damn, I got two, I'll, and that's a handful. I'll, yeah, are they bigger? Yeah, yeah. Bigger dogs, yeah. Mine are all this big. Oh, that's good. That's easy. I wish yeah. mine were small it, so I could just pick them up and stop that. Uh, I had a jar. I had a giant dog. I had um, I, when he passed away, he was 138 pounds, which is more than I weigh. So, wow. but I, as much fun as he was, I don't think I'll ever have a large dog again. I do not want to pick up shits bigger than my own. Yeah. And, and, uh, and he just deserved more than I could ever give him. I live in a small place, you know, he deserves to run free on a farm and that's yeah. never life. So, yeah. 
I can walk my chihuahua around the block and she's like tight. I don't want to do that again for like a week. (laughs) (laughs) Your pack. They're all being so good right now too. They haven't even like a rough barking and they're they're sleepy. All one over for you to see, but then it'll, you don't want to disturb it. It'll. Yeah. It'll (laughs) open a can of worms. Yeah. Well, it's been good to talk to you and I, I gotta, Oh, there's there one there. There's two. Oh, look at the little puppy doggies. Hi, Hi. sleeping. Hi, dragons. Yes, little dragons. <laughs> well, yeah, I better get going. Um, it's been really good to talk to you. And um, so I'll put this out like in a couple weeks or so. Um, okay. You know, I'll put all of the, um, the links to where to buy your stuff and how to find your music and everything down below. Cool. So. Yeah. Awesome. Sounds fun. Yeah. And thanks a lot have for you, talking to me. Who else have you, have you done any other interviews yet? What, like, yeah, I've done a lot. I've done, uh, so I've done Austin Lucas and Frank Turner and my brother and oh, Johnny Frank Durbin. And, and um, I love her. Yeah, he's a sweetheart. <laughs> I like, yeah, that's that, um, the Queen song or whatever, the Queen is dead or God save the Queen or, oh my God, talk about a fucking cry fest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's got that that album, uh, No Man's Land, where he focuses on women in history that were real and they and their stories are untold, basically, and not or not very well told. So it was really cool that he focused on that, you know, to bring out their stories so that people yeah. know them better. I love that. I love a man standing up for women. That's great. Yeah. Yep. He's a badass. So yeah. I spoke with him and then um who else? A whole bunch, but um, they're oh, they're right here. Ta da! <laughs> um, der. yeah, Whitney and Jesse too. I talked to them, and one was in Texas and one was in New York, and that was really cool. <laughs> yeah, they're fun. Have you have you gone on tour with them? We have not. No, somehow we never played with them. I don't know how that happened, but <laughs> y'all have been together either. Oh, they're so they are a hoot. I bet. They're yeah. a, I love that new is album. Probably too. ever. Like their their um bucket player. He's just like the best people. You should interview him. He's fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my plan is to go back and interview basically every member of every band. <laughs> you know, cuz it's a perspective that is different. It's not just like just Oh, I'm sure the writer or the singer, it's everybody, you know. My band would have all kinds of shit to talk about me. So like, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. I mean, you know, on Zoom, we could do multiple people too. So that would be cool. That was fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, but right now I'm just trying to grasp the technology at one, one get good at one part of it at a time because right. I'm still kind of new to it. So yeah, the video editing portion is like boom, over my head. Yeah, it's not as tricky as you think once you once you sit down and get into it. I it took me a little while, but I'm getting there. <laughs> yeah, my boyfriend is incredibly like in technically inclined, so like it's amazing. I can just watch him turn nothing into something on the computer and I'm like, "Is do you have paint?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my that's my wife is the same way. She's taught me a lot about and YouTube. YouTube helps a lot. <laughs> oh my god. I yeah. am completely with this. <laughs> so, paint. Yeah. yeah. Our like, first logo I made on paint for Larry and his flask. <laughs> we made t shirts with that. You with know, like the, sketchy ass, you know, the lines. Like, lines, yeah, yeah. That are like ziggity zaggity. Yeah. yeah. Super low res. It was Love awesome. It. And the paint can. Do you still have it, the shirt? Somewhere. I don't Do you know. Go, I think my mom you, has one. Have, do you keep like flyers and things like that? Yeah, I got a bunch back here, but not all of them. Oh, I, a lot of them are at my mom's house. And the Scott, shirt the shirt was like a circle and then it was like bright orange with a black circle and the spray paint feature on the paint program with the I love it. So bad. Yeah. Rock it. Bring it back. Yeah, I should. I got to oh. find a computer with paint. <laughs> yeah do it just do it again you're right make yeah. a new one yeah i don't know if anybody has that original silk screen Probably yeah not 
they washed it out a long time ago. But. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I guess I should throw this in too. So can you, where can you get your merch then too? Can you get it from Flail. the same website? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Everything's on Flail Records. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Well, nice talking to you, Libby. Lovely talking to you. Have a beautiful day. Stay sane. Stay healthy. Yeah. Ditto. Watch yeah. lots of bad TV. I will. Definitely. <laughs> right. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.